In this video, we will expand on the previous system. If you haven't seen the previous system, check out the link in the description. In this video, we are going to add solar panels. We will start by selecting the solar panels and adding a fuse. Next, we will calculate the voltage drop over the wires and select a charge controller. We will choose a wire with a fuse holder and will go over the cost of this expansion at the end. The solar panels should charge the battery in one day. In most locations, the amount of sun hours per day is 3. Remember that our usable battery capacity was 600 watt hours. If we divide 600 watt hours by 3 hours, we become 200 watts. So we need 200 watts worth of solar panels to charge the battery in one day. To keep the installation portable and the current low, we will use two 100 watt solar panels. The solar panels can be from any manufacturer like Santan Solar or Renergy. We need a fuse between the solar panels and the charge controller. The size of the fuse will be indicated on the back of the solar panel. In this case, the maximum series fuse is 10 amps. We will use a 10 amp MC4 fuse. Next, we will wire the solar panels to the existing system. As you can see on the schematic, the two solar panels are wired in series. That means that the negative of the first panel is connected to the positive of the second panel. If we do that, we will have one positive and one negative wire. After we have attached the 10 amp MC4 fuse, we can put both ends into the charge controller. The wires from the solar panel to the charge controllers will be longer than other wires in the system. That's why we need to do a voltage drop calculation. I have made a video about why we must do this. We will multiply the open circuit voltage of the solar panel by 2, because we have two panels in series. This adds up the voltage. Check out my video about wiring in series or parallel for more information on why we wire in series. We now become 42.6 volts. The current stays the same at 5.93 amps. Now we have everything we need to calculate the voltage drop, except the distance to the charge controller. I will calculate two wire lengths, one 25 feet and one 40 feet. As a rule, you must keep the total voltage drop under 3%. In example 1, we need a 16 gauge wire. In the second example, we will need a 14 gauge wire. In reality, there are only 10 and 12 gauge extension wires sold online. So we will use a 12 gauge cable with MC4 connectors. We need to select the charge controller. We have to calculate two things here. The first is the current to the battery and the second is a maximum input voltage of the charge controller. If we divide 200 watts of solar by 13 volts charging voltage, we become 15.4 amps. We must multiply this by a safety factor of 1.25 to become 19.25 amps. We can use a 20 amp charge controller. The total voltage of the two panels is 42.6 volts. We also have to multiply this by a safety factor of 1.25 to become 53.25 volts. This is under 100 volts. Combining these two values, we can select a charge controller that is 20 amps with a maximum input voltage of 100 volts. Lastly, we must select the wire from the charge controller to the battery. The charge controller will put a maximum of 20 amps into the battery. So we need a wire that can handle 20 amps. To calculate the minimum fuse size, we have to calculate the current that goes through the wire, which is 20 amps. We multiply that by the 1.25 safety factor, to become 25 amps. The wire can be 12 gauge, but since there is no 25 amp fuse, we have to use a 10 gauge wire. The maximum fuse for a 10 gauge cable is 35 amps. Now we need to choose a fuse that is in between these two. We will use a 30 amp fuse. The maximum length will be 6 feet. Keep this distance as short as possible. 
The total cost for the system is everything from the previous video plus the extra components we have added to this system. These are two solar panels for a total of $180, 20 feet solar extension cable for $23, an inline MC4 fuse for $16, a 20 amp charge controller for $80, 10 gauge battery cables with a fuse holder for $15. In total we have $314 plus $304 for the previous installation. The total cost for a system is $622. The links to these parts will be included in the description. The solar panels are easy to add. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and consider subscribing for more videos like this. If you want to learn more about off-grid solar power, consider getting my best-selling book.